All right, guys, how's it going? It's Stas here. Welcome to my home, little home brewery. We're here for another video, another Beer Co video, and today we are going to be talking about getting into all grain brewing and the various setups or equipment you might need if you're looking to get into it or you know somebody who is thinking about it. Now, because of the pandemic, uh, in Australia, a lot of the country is still in lockdown. There's a lot of people at home uh, not going out anymore um, and often sitting, sitting around with um, a lot of time on their hands and they're not spending much money on going out, um, those sort of things. They're looking for a hobby and somewhere, some, something to pass the time of the lockdown and maybe learn a new skill or two. So many people have been turning to home brewing as a way of, you know, learning something new and learning a, a new hobby and enjoying great beer at home, not just at the local pub and brewery. So we're going to talk about three basic um, equipment lists, as well as uh, some other fundamental things you might need to do. Of course, there's the fresh wood kits and, you know, kit and kilo stuff. You can make great beer with that. But, you know, most people are just deciding to dive in and do it, you know, wholeheartedly uh, rather than faff about. Um, nothing wrong with those other ways. You can make great beers, but this is the ultimate control and, you know, control over the whole process. So let's have a look at the, um, at the, at the example systems so that we've got. The easiest and cheapest uh, way to get into this hobby is a brew in a bag system. Now, I've got this uh, Digiboil 35 here. You can also use a crown urn or something like that. Basically need a fairly large kettle, or in this case, it's an urn. Um, a temperature controller is nice to just take some of the, the manual uh, work out of it. Um, and you need a brew in a bag bag, which basically is a nylon bag that goes inside um, to hold the grain, which you then put in, we'll do a mash um, in there uh, for an hour and control the, the wort uh, temperature. You can either hook a, a pump up to the outlet here and recirculate that, or you can do it manually using a big jug or something, just pour five liters in, tip it over the top. That's also totally fine, a bit more manual. Um, and then you remove the, the grain bag uh, and sparge it, then you boil, add your hops, chill it down using an immersion chiller or a counter flow chiller. They're probably a little bit more advanced. Um, or if you don't have all that, you can of course do a no chill brew into a, you know, a 20 litre HDPE uh, container uh, and then ferment it later when, you, when that works chilled down naturally and then you'll need somewhere to ferment. You don't need anything fancy. I mean, an HDPE plastic fermenter is gonna be totally fine uh, to brew really great beers at home. Uh, the key thing is sanitation and cleanliness, and you wanna be able to um, control the fermentation temperature. Now, in my setup, I've got an old fridge. Uh, this is actually a freezer. You can see in there, we've got a fermenter and a little keg for another day um, and a heat belt in there and that's actually being controlled by an ink bird temperature controller there's lots of different ways to do this people have made their own with um, STC 1000s or ink birds or, or other temperature controls I'll put some links to equipment in in the description below um, but that allows you to really easily and automatically set the temperature whatever you want and you know this little brew area is outside so in summer it can get to you know 40 degrees with the afternoon sun coming in easily i know that my beer is going to be fermenting away at you know, 18 degrees or if i'm doing a lago i can even ferment very easily at you know 10 degrees if i wanted to i can also if i'm doing kvike i can just crank the heat up to you know 30 plus degrees and i know that it that's just going to do what I tell it to. You can also do it more manually, find a temperature stable place in your house. Maybe you've got a, uh, 
a room in the center of your house or if you've got a basement that's you know underground or partially underground um, that can be really good and just set up a, a little place there wrap it in blankets it's just a bit more manual this is i really like the the exact control that i have over this system so yeah your introduction system you've got your brew in a bag urn brew in a bag bag good recipe ingredients send somewhere to ferment um, and secondhand uh, fridge, freezer and the temperature controller um, it, it's not going to be that expensive a lot of people have a spare fridge or a family member that's getting rid of one keep an eye on Facebook marketplace they come up all the time for nearly nothing um, and home brewers are um, jumping on them straight away so that's the entry level if you want something a little bit more uh, automated um, uh, these new, well, they're not so new anymore. Uh, the single vessel system, this one's a grain father. Um, they can, I mean, they're really great in the fact that they pack down everything that you need packs down inside, except the fermenter. Um, you've got a um, bit more fancy uh, temperature control. It's got a PID, so it will vary the amount of power going to the elements based on what you're trying to do. When you're at mash temps, it's just, pulsating those elements ever so slightly just to make sure that the temperature stays at the correct temperature and then when you're ramping up to a boil it'll kick their full power into the elements so you get there quicker um, rather than a, uh, a mesh bag they usually come with a you know a stainless steel malt pipe with perforated base and you know an overflow these are it's just a lot less the engineered to be very forgiving uh, for the new brewer or you know if you've got young kids and you might get called away here and there um, it, they sort of look after themselves they um, I'll put the price here um, this is the original system which I've made a couple of modifications in case you think it looks a bit odd um, so I've just added a, a ball lock valve and a cam lock here and um, I think that's the only upgrade I've done. I've so, sort of done it in bits and stages, various stages. Uh, but I've had this for probably seven years now or so, and it's served me well. They have also released a G70, um, the big the big brother of this one, uh, last year. Um, so if you're looking to maybe brew for a larger family or a larger household of drinkers, um, or you've got, you know, you usually have friends that come around and you're, you're brewing for more people to enjoy at home, you can brew up to sort of three kegs at a time in that system. Um, same convenience, just on a larger scale. Um, so yeah, the, the all-in-one or the single vessel systems are a really great option sort of the mid-tier um, range but because of their ease of use we're finding a lot of people are just jumping in at that mid-tier level um, just because they want it to be easy and they want to make sure that they make a good product of course you can also um, go the full bling setup with you know a th big three vessel system with pumps and make it look like a pro brewery on a small scale essentially and rather than having you know an old fridge with a temperature controller, you might have a glycol chiller and stainless steel conicals with and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you've got the space and the money for it, that's awesome. Uh, for me, I find I get great results um, out of the equipment that I've got. Like I said, I've got a stainless steel brew bucket and I've also got a 30 litre stainless steel keg um, for you know pressure fermentation and uh, no oxygen transfers of hoppy beers or lagers or things like that um, and so you know it's more expensive than the plastic stuff but it's not exorbitant um, yeah so th that's sort of three three basic levels the key thing to remember um, is the principles um, a lot a lot of um, people say that you know with, with good recipe and good ingredients you know it wants to become beer. You can you can think you've messed it up, and you know, it, as long as your your ingredients and your recipe is good, and your temperature control is good, both of the mash and 
more importantly, fermentation. Um, and look after your yeast. Remember that you know yeast is a, a live organism. Yeast are living creatures. If you don't treat them the way that they want to be treated, they're not going to perform the way that you expect them to. So you need to make sure that they've got um, and that you pitch enough yeast, that you are controlling the temperature of the fermentation and not letting it get too warm or too cold. And probably the thing that you're going to be spending the most amount of time doing is making sure things are clean and sanitized. Luckily for home brewers, there's a lot of really great products out there which make that job um, as painless as possible. Um, you know, there's um, PBW and um, sodium percarbonate, uh, things like that, which will help you keep your fermenters and brew gear clean, uh, as well as no rinse phosphoric acid based sanitizers, which, you know, you, you, they're really easy to use and they're safe um, um, and they're, they're, they're fairly cost effective as well. So keeping all those things, um, if, if you're doing all those things, the beer will largely look after itself. So um, it's a really rewarding hobby. Um, you know, you get to share your results with your friends. Well, not necessarily now, but you get to enjoy what you make and try different things. Um, and I really recommend if you're thinking about doing it, this is the perfect time to do it. Go and find if you don't live near Beer Co um, or you, you got um, questions that you want to ask, hit us up in the comments down below or go into your local home brew shop. You know, I, I work at Newcastle Brew Shop. Uh, there's uh, plenty of great uh, channels. Uh, well, I guess it's like my staff brewing channel, you can, hopefully you find that interesting, but there, there's plenty of other great sources of information on the internet. Uh, the only caveat I would say is that because there's so much information, um, find someone that you like the sound of their information and sort of focus on the way that they recommend to do it um, because everyone's got their own way and there's a lot of people that think that their way is the only way and their way is the best way to just um, limit confusion so I, I would recommend just sort of stick with one main person to follow and sort of take other ideas and sort of explore them but don't take everything as gospel I guess is what I'm trying to say so hopefully you found uh, this information useful and um, if you are thinking about um, getting into the hobby, like I said, I really recommend it. It's a really rewarding hobby. If there's someone in your life that's been thinking about it, been talking about it, maybe you might just give them a little nudge um, and it'd be a great way to uh, get ready for the summer weather, which hopefully, hopefully will be out and uh, seeing friends and family again. So until the next video, this has been Stas in lockdown with another video brought to you by Vico. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.